Can I look at you? Hey, everybody. This is uh, Chad Pullins, lead pastor here at Crossroads. I'm with my sister, Jerry. Say, hey, Jerry. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, she doesn't have it. <laughs> It's great to uh, see you guys today. And I um, asked if Jerry would just take a couple of moments out of her her day to just share just some powerful things that God's been doing in your life. And I, I always love to hear bits and pieces of your story. Uh, each yeah. time I, I talk with you, I hear more of it. And it's pretty amazing everything that God's done for you. And, and maybe, I know we don't have you know, time today to hear everything, but would love to just hear how God, um, what, what has God kind of been doing in, in your life um, in, in the last little while? Well, God brought me to Fayetteville because I would not have come to the Fayetteville Hope Mills area on my own. <laughs> this is not your, your <laughs> resort living, right? It wasn't anywhere on my plans at all. And so I, uh, after my motorcycle, motorcycle accident in 2008, Mm. I couldn't go back to my previous lifestyle, and... Which you were working as a nurse, like an open heart? I worked open heart ICU nurse at, wow. at a teaching hospital, and I was a sexual assault nurse examiner in Texas, and we also, besides taking evidence, we also testified, and right. that was on the side, that wasn't... It's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, pretty intense, and then I did for... Downtime, I always rode my motorcycle and went on road trips. Wow, so I had an accident, and then after that, wasn't able to go back to that work. Right, severe accident, multiple surgeries. Wow. Uh, I found out a year after the accident that I was never supposed to walk again. Hmm. You know. But, yeah. But should have died, didn't. So I went to Seattle. To, I leased out my house in Texas and went to Seattle, and that situation didn't work out. And I remember driving here, because my daughter was here. Right. And thinking, how did I get to be this age and no place to live? I felt homeless. Mm. But I, didn't, I mean, I still owned my house. Right. So I came here, and I was just going to help for six months, and then I'd go back to Texas. And how long ago was that? Three years ago. Three years. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember driving down the road and I was saying, God, I know I told you that I'd do anything you wanted me to right. if I survived through that motorcycle accident. Mm. Like but Hope Mills, North Carolina, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> are I you can identify sure? with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, you know, it's like, what good am I here? Right. And, um, you know, I ask God a lot of times for some help. Right. But then I don't want to listen to his answer. Mm. So after I'd been here about 10 months, the horse threw me, and I had the subarachnoid hemorrhage, which was a brain bleed. They said you came to see me. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so uh, that's how I got here. Right. And obviously it's where God wanted me, not where I wanted to be. Sure. And so what's the big thing that Jesus has been teaching you during this time? The main thing is I tried to go back to work here. Right. Again, you know, it's in my head that I've worked all my life. I have to work. Right. And that didn't work out. They kept extending my probation. And it's like God kept saying it. I'd pray and God'd say, nope, hmm. not going to happen. I didn't know how to do anything else. Mm. I figured that God wanted me to always do the medical thing. Right. That's That was his plan for me, right? Well, God had a different plan for me. And I was sitting in my truck. I pulled in the driveway one day, and it was a pretty day. And I heard him say, I mean, I'm always saying, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And he said, just be available. Just be available. And I thought, what is that about? Isn't it interesting how God always, my, my experience has been that God always speaks concisely mm -hmm. and with clarity. Yes. Yes. You know, so does. be available is very concise. <laughs> it's very clear. So what are, what are some ways in which Jesus, one, that you've been making yourself available and how Jesus has been using you in that? You know, it's kind of like Every day is a new day. Yeah. My neighbor's daughter, who's an adult, became very sick last fall with Crohn's disease. Mm. 
and uh, the medical care here, I don't know what was going on, but I intervened in that. I mean, they, people that don't have the medical knowledge don't know how to fight back sometimes in a professional manner. So did that, I, ended up, I took her to Chapel Hill to see a specialist. Uh, I sat down with her and helped her write out her medication plan and I forget that people really don't know, okay, you need to do A, B, C, D and write it out, like, you know. Yeah, so. you're able to be there for her with that. Right, yeah. right. Um, and then Robin, a friend of mine who needs a kidney transplant, of course we did the silent auction and we, you know, it was available to do anything there, but then she needed or wanted somebody to go with her to Chapel Hill. Yeah. You know, so Joe wouldn't have to take off work. Right. So I was there doing all that. Right. Which to me is no big deal because medicine's normal to me. Yeah. And you were able to be available again. Right, to be that. available. And every time I would think about sending out my resume again, something would happen with Michelle, either with her work schedule or her school schedule, or something would come up, and she'd call at the last minute and say, can you go get Megan? Can you do Megan? You know, can you take care of Megan because of the work schedules? So I'm, even though I think I have a schedule, I don't. And uh, I'm just available. Yeah. So what, how is that impacting you in your walk with Christ and kind of learning this lesson of being available? Well, I'm having to let go of my control. Mm-hmm. I've always believed in God, and I've always known that Jesus, he has always put the right nurse with the right patient type deal. Yeah. But as far as my life, personal life, it's like every day I have to say, okay, God, it's your deal. It's your deal. And, and taking a step back. Right. And letting him every day let me know then what does he want me to do. And I'm a bad procrastinator. So uh, he's kind of teaching me not to put things off <laughs> because if I think I'm going to do it tomorrow, he may have a different plan for me tomorrow. Sure. You know? Sure. Kind of, so kind of doing like what's in front of me right now, being faithful to what's in front of me right then and there. And I think the, the hardest part of me, and it says in the Bible about, you know, God didn't want us to kill ourselves working. But my life is fun. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's a blessing. He, he's given me a fun life. Yeah. You know, I don't have all the money I used to have. I don't have all the toys I used to have. But it's fun. Right. You know, and... And it sounds like, too, that he's taken, I mean, one, to the motorcycle accident, that it's not that God's given up on you, but in many ways has created space to continue to use you throughout that journey, although it may be in a different way than he was right. using you before, right. but he hasn't given up. And it sounds like the word be available is a piece of that. This is how I want to use you, just be available. Let me, let me ask you this, Jerry, um, just a powerful story, by the way. And what would, what would you say to maybe someone who is maybe struggling with the same thing, um, maybe there's a change within their life of where they've gone or where they need to go. Maybe uh, they spend a lot of time getting out in front of themselves. I mean, what would you say to someone that's struggling with just being available to be faithful with the f- thing that's right in front of them? My thing is I have to trust God and know that he knows what my plan is, what the plan is for me. Yeah. I don't know. And to trust that if something's not working out, it's not meant to be. Yeah. You know, and, and but I did, I, God's put some beautiful people in my life because I couldn't even like myself when I first got here because I felt like a failure. Yeah. So he put people in my life that proved to me they loved me till I could love myself again. Wow, that's awesome. You know, yeah. and so I, I have to remember to surround myself with positive people. Right. You know, they love me enough to call me on some things. Right. Uh, and trust that God's going to open doors as he wants them opened. And that 
even though I think I need to do something else, I really don't. Yeah. yeah. I really don't. Uh, one, one last question that, that just as you were saying that made me think of it was how, when it comes to trusting, what are, are there some things that you do, some disciplines that you have that help you to trust God um, that may be helpful for someone? Or is it just kind of come uh, natural for you? Well, I, I'll, it's something I've always done, but if I quit doing it, then I start getting into myself. Is that every morning I spend time with God, mm. you know? And my my one prayer that I've always asked is, God, let me have knowledge of Your will, yeah, and the wisdom and strength to carry it out. There you go. And uh, that's a prayer I've always, I've said for years. Love that. Of course, when I don't get the immediate answer, that's why I'm driving in the truck, yeah. asking him, are you yeah. sure? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Type deal. So I always do that. And then uh, I always close my night, close my day with talking to God and going over the day a lot, of, sometimes, not as many as when I started this, but I usually have to go, okay. I lost my temper with that person. I need to go make amends for that. Right. You know, just reviewing my yeah, day. Yeah, some review. And uh, and then if there's something going on, you say, I have a, a thing, we call it a God pocket. And if it's really weighing on my mind, I just write it on a piece of paper and put it in the God pocket. And every New Year's Eve, I take all that out. Huh. And, uh, That's cool. That and positive readings. Different people do different things. But I, I do read every day about God and then reading the Bible and see yeah. what it so, is. So this idea, if I'm hearing you right, that resting in him to begin your day with prayer and with study and then closing the day with reviewing and reflecting upon things that have happened and making adjustments. Yes. There, that kind of helps you to walk in his ways. Yes. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a great word. And then in that, you're able to be available. I, I'm available. And if I think... Just an example, when I didn't have to, the hardest thing for me to do is get up and start doing things. I, I was raised you get up to work, yeah. or you get up to do things. And uh, when Sherelle didn't come back from Connecticut to my house, I didn't have to get up anymore. And he put a stray dog out of the woods, a puppy. And this dog was not housebroken. So I had to get up every morning and go outside every morning. So my answers are, he answers me in small ways. Yeah. It's not a great big lightning bolt. Yeah, small ways. You know, and I look back and go, oh, that's why he sent me that dog. <laughs> that's great. That's so, great. That's great. That, this, has been, this has been great. I know we haven't had a, a ton of time to go into everything, but I think just a really helpful word for folks. Um, and so if... Maybe you're out there and maybe you're struggling with, you know, what's the next step for me? What, what should I do next within my life? Um, one, of the, one of the ways in which that you can just be available is those simple disciplines um, of just getting up, resting in, in God, and then also reflecting in Him in the evening. And um, I think just like it's been helpful for Jerry, it'll also be helpful for you. So uh, thanks again for being with us. Thank you. Look forward to Sunday. You guys take care. Bye. Bye. A few things that jumped out to me that I, I thought were just fantastic um, were...